Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Gamesmith where today we're going to be turning these crystal beads into these crystal rock formations. I'll see you at the table. I've decided to use a sheet of crafter's cork as the base since I can shape it and layer it to look like stone. I'll start by chipping away at the edges to create a shape that I'm satisfied with. I want to shape my base to create a jagged mound in order to put my crystals on. Next we want to plan how we're going to lay our fragments on our base in order to create our rocky surface. We will then glue our cork together. I like using goop 2 for this, but any glue will work just fine. Just a heads up that goop does have a strong odor while it's wet, so you might want to do this in a well-ventilated area while gluing the cork pieces together. This product will squish out the sides, so you shouldn't need to apply very much. If you have any excess, just use an old paintbrush handle or some other tool to remove it. And here we have our completed cork base. Make sure to keep all your debris that you remove from the edges so you can use them later, not only for this build, but others in the future. Once the base is dry, I have a mixture of 50-50 black acrylic hobby paint and a matte finish Mod Podge that I'm going to paint the base with. The 50-50 mix will reinforce the cork, especially around the edges so the cork doesn't chip off at the game table. Because this paint glue mixture is meant to reinforce the cork, Make sure to paint all sides, including the bottom. Mod Podge is a glue, and while our mixture is very wet, we want to add some aggregate to our base. We'll just sprinkle a few fish tank rocks and decorative sand particles loosely over the base and give it more surface texture. And I'll add some more to the outside edges, and when I'm done I'll shake off all the aggregate that doesn't stick and let it dry. After the paint Mod Pod mixture is dried, paint it again to cover up the aggregate. And this extra layer will reinforce the cork base and make sure that you won't lose any of the little rocks on your game table. Then we want to leave this for several hours in order to make sure that it thoroughly dries. Now it's time to paint our base to look more stone-like. If you guessed we're going to start with a dark grey camouflage pattern, then you get a gold star! Try not to get paint down into the deep cracks that you may have created with your cork in order to preserve your shadowy features. Now normally I'd switch to light grey paint next, but instead I'm going to switch to brown or a burnt umber. The reason for this is I want the base to have a more earthy or dirty appearance, since I'm likely to be using these crystals in an underground encounter. I can accomplish the look I want by dabbing the brown at random spots just like I did with the dark grey. Now I'll switch to the light grey and use this color quite sparingly as I dab it around my base. For dry brushing, we load very little paint on our brush and remove the excess so that very little paint remains in the bristles. We drag the brush over the highest surface textures and the edges of our build in order to highlight them. I'll post a link in the top right corner to my foundations video, which covers dry brushing in much greater detail. Next, my favorite step in the build is actually adding the crystals. They are a bit pricey, but with the coupon, the crystals were actually a worthwhile purchase. Now we want to plan out where our crystals will go on our base. We can use a dab of hot glue to affix the crystal. Use the jagged ridges of both the cork base and the crystal to puzzle together the best location in order to attach them together. 
We don't want to use a slow drying glue for this so that the crystal has a chance to lean or fall over. Where possible, don't just glue the base of the crystal, but dab some glue on the sides to stick to other surface features to reinforce our build. Cluster the crystals together, pointing away from each other in multiple directions. Now we have a table-ready, detailed crystal formation. I hope you enjoyed this video in the Scatter Terrain series and are picking up a few skills on how to make scatter terrain for your own table. I realize some of the techniques I cover might seem repetitive, but I've spent half of my life as an educator and it's a habit of mine to break down skills into steps and repeat them for people so that they can master them and use them as they see fit. If you would like to see my take on some scatter terrain that we haven't covered, please tell me what they are in the comment section down below. I'd really like to hear from you. In our next video, we're going to tackle something that every tabletop RPG needs, treasure mounds. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.